Hello, this is Saturday, July 29, and this is Cancer Update 41. Caroline and I have just been down to Murdoch Hospital, and we've had my, uh, my bag, my bottle, I should say, removed. So that's come off. So I'll just now show you the footage of that happening so that we can watch that in progress. Have you ever had a COVID? Never. Never. Beauty. Any allergies? No. No. Very good. Can you speak Japanese? No. Hey. <laughs> Fair enough. I want to get the blood tests mm. from before. The um, tumor marker? Tumor marker yep. blood test, yeah. Yeah. Let me bottle off there. Okay, yep, yeah, sure. <clears throat> Camera <clears throat> now is waiting for me. Yeah, she is. It's <laughs> alright. You can stare at your belly. Go on, flex your pecs. Nothing but sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you just make the girls go wild, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, you'll have to. So is it just you on today? No, Sarah's there. Sarah with a H? Yes. Yeah. Sarah with a H. Yes, yes, you're right. But other Sarah's got H as well, isn't she? Uh, it's just I got introduced to her. I, I just know her as Sarah, Sarah with a H. Where is she? Sarah is in the, in the office. Oh, nurse manager. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And that is Sarah with the H. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to have a look at this tree. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, um, Sarah with the H was saying, yes. the manufacturer. Yes, yes, we were talking about it. Yeah, so I think this is another one. It's, because mm. it is 46 hours now. Yes. yes. So, yeah. So just to just, show, it's at one and a half. I've got one and a half left. Mm -hmm. um, but that is still within within range. So we are going to remove it. <coughs> we were talking about it. Yes, we were, yes. Oh. I, I took that off just then. That's a pretty red, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You're sensitive. Skin. I'm very sensitive. Yeah. Skin. Skin, <laughs> yes. Skin too. Skin too. Skin. My skin as is well. sensitive as well, yes. As well as? As my personality. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. So that's just flush, right? Yes, they like yeah. flush. Can you feel that going in? Paul? You feel it just a little bit cold? Yeah. Because you, know, you, you feel the temperature difference. So yeah. it just feels a little bit cold. All right, so this is a bit I want to make sure Caroline gets on camera. Oh, glue remover? Oh, blue <laughs> Yeah, this, it doesn't really help, but better than nothing. Okay, sure. So you were the model, Paul? I was a model back in the day, yeah. Why? Why? With a sensitive heart. With a sensitive heart, that's right. <laughs> and the dimples. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You want to take a breathe in? One, two, three. So you feel basically nothing when that happens, so it's all fine. It's just a tiny, tiny prick. Yep. 
Yes, smiles. I'm smiling. Yep, that's All cool. Good. That's good. So yes. now we'll get you'll print out the blood, yes. the tumor markers yes. for me. Slowly, slowly. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> she wants me to slowly, slowly put yes, my clothes slowly, back on. Slow. Just slowly? <laughs> All right. For you, just yes, slow. Because I haven't. You got your glasses got on? No. I have glasses <laughs> I will. I will need it too. Okay, so, so that's off now. Um, so I'm now unplugged mm. for the next um, 12 days. And um, that's the end of round two being infused. Mm. Of course, now I've got to deal with the um, effectively the fallout of, of what's now been put into me. Um, so today is day three, so we're getting towards the end of day three. And um, historically, or last round, I've only done one round previous to this, it was about an hour from now that I crashed. But if you remember this time, I've now taken two steroid tablets. So I'm thinking I might get a bit of a better run this time. I'm also, while I think of it, on twice the buf bu buprenorphine that I was last time. So last time I was on the five micrograms per hour, I'm now on 10 micrograms per hour. So that's another thing that's in my favor. And um, I'd say the other thing that's in my favor now is that my, uh, my diet has been excellent. Now that, now that Caroline is um, helping me with my dietary um, intake, that, that's uh, Caroline wiggling happiness, I believe. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm gonna have a better run here. So. Just going to get the paper results. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So what I'll do is when I get home, I'll do another another um, session with you and I'll make up a table and I'll graph these um, cancer marker results. We'll talk then. See you soon. So as you can see, that went quite well. Uh, it was very quick and I must admit it was also very painless. So we were given the um, numbers for my cancer markers for my CA199 and my CEA. I'll now pop those up on the screen just over here. So if we start with CA199, you can see that way back in April, when we first realized that we had a problem with me, my CA199 score was 3,900. And you can see if you look in over to the right, the normal range for that needs to be under 37 and I had 3,900. So we knew at that point I had a massive problem. Now, just before having my first set of chemo, that number had dropped down to 3,193. And that was a factor, I'm told, of having had an ascites drain. So bear in mind, I hadn't had any chemo at that stage. That's before the first chemo. And it came down quite a bit. And the, the oncologist explained to me, that's because I've had a drain. Now, if you look at my number from yesterday, or two days ago, I should say, July 27, it's now down to 2,798. So there are two factors there. One is that I've had one lot of chemo, and the other is I've had another ascites drain. So you can see on that CA199 graph that the number is, has gone down and then down again. And each time it's going down by a fairly considerable number but it does now need to get all the way down to under 37 for me to be um, cancer free. So I've got a fair way to go. If we look at CEA now, you can see that uh, way back in April, I was 46.5. Before I did my first chemotherapy, it had drifted up ever so slightly to 46.8. And now that I've had one lot of chemotherapy, it's back down to 46.5. So that graph makes it look quite dramatic, but if you look at the, um, the scale, you'll see that it's only actually gone up by 0.3 and then come down by 0.3. So that's actually no big deal at all. I'll pop up on the screen the definitions for what CA199 is. So I'll just change this graphic over here for you. So what is a CA199 blood test? A CA199 tests the measure of the amount of a protein called CA199, which is cancer antigen 199, in a sample of your blood. CA199 is a type of tumour marker. Tumour markers are substances made by cancer cells or by normal cells in response to cancer in your body. Healthy people can have small amounts of 199 in their blood. High levels of CA199 are often a sign of pancreatic cancer but high levels can also be a sign of other types of cancers or certain conditions that aren't cancer. For example, gallstones and cirrhosis of the liver can cause high CA199 levels. 
Because high levels of CA99 can mean different things, the test is not used by itself to screen for or diagnose cancer or other diseases, but it can help monitor your cancer and check how well your treatment is going. So if you remember in my case, um, I have pseudomyxoma peritonei, which is all to do with the peritoneum, and that obviously does include the pancreas, it does include um, the liver, and it doesn't include um, gallstones, which would be either in the liver or the kidneys. Um, it's, oh no, sorry, that's in the gallbladder. So yeah, the pancreas, the gallbladder, or the liver, they are all um, uh, organs of mine that are in trouble. Now, if we look at what is a CEA, so I'll change the graphic again. Uh, so what is carcinoembryonic antigen, or CEA? While in the uterus, an unborn baby produces CEA, but healthy adults produce little or none of this protein. Smokers may have elevated levels of carcinoembryonic antigen, as well as people with the following non-cancerous conditions, and it lists out emphysema, cirrhosis, benign breast disease, inflammation of the gallbladder, inflammation of the pancreas, peptic ulcer, ulcerative coli col colitis, ul ulcerative colitis, or rectal polyps. High levels correspond to the presence of colorectal cancer, as well as cancers of the pancreas, liver, stomach, ovaries, thyroid, lungs, and breasts. So um, I obviously don't, don't have ovaries, but I, um, I do have the rest, and we know that, that from the cytology results, what I do have is um, uh, pseudomyxoma peritonei, or peritoneal carcinomatosis. So that's why we are measuring those two, um, those two markers, and... Um, yeah, and that's pretty much all I've got to say on that today. So we're heading in the right direction. We just need to keep going. This is the end of day three that I'm in now. So it was at this stage uh, a fortnight ago that I started to crash because the, um, the steroids had worn off, but the, the, um, the cytotoxic drugs had not worn off. I have taken those two extra pills this time, so I'm hoping that I'm not going to crash um, as early or as hard uh, but we, we shall find out. So thank you for watching Cancer Update um, 41 and um, we'll be in touch again soon. Have a great morning, afternoon or night, wherever you are. Thanks from Paul in Perth. See you later. Hello there. This is Saturday, July 21 and this is Cancer Update... No.